All right. Um, welcome to the Network uh, Policy Talk. Um, my name is Mohammed Bani Kazemi, and I'm with uh, Sumit Naiksatam and um, Stephen Wong and Hemant Ravi here. Um, we are going to do this presentation as a group. There are a bunch of people who have been involved in this work that we are going to uh, um, mention during our talk. So if you guys recall, uh, we had a discussion in the last summit where we started talking about network policy and how um, useful they can be. Uh, since that talk, we have had an active uh, uh, subgroup in Neutron, and we have been actively working, and uh, we have made uh, significant uh, progress during this cycle, and we are excited to share that with you guys today. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to have a brief introduction just to motivate what we want to do, uh, where we want to go, uh, and then uh, just to make sure that we are at the level set, talk about the Neutron abstractions very briefly, and then start uh, uh, presenting the group policy extension. That's uh, uh, the work we have done. Um, and then we have a, a proof of concept implementation that we are going to discuss um, in this talk and present a demo, uh, uh, and then end uh, with um, uh, future directions for the work, and hopefully we will have enough time to have a lively debate at the end. Um, and I guess I could use this. Um, so as you guys have, uh, I'm sure, have used that have experience using um, Neutron, and you, I'm sure you have noticed that the abstractions and the API that is provided by Neutron is, for the most part, network-centric. And we have been advocating for a more application-centric uh, set of abstractions in addition to what Neutron uh, is offering right now uh, in terms of network abstractions. And uh, the main goal is having a set of APIs or abstractions that are more easily consumable by um, application deployers and the non-networking admins. And as we set up to do this work, um, we wanted to make sure that we have a uh, complete framework for having a so, uh, having support for declarative models in which uh, users can declare their intent with respect to network virtualization uh, requirements that they have and get it as a result. We want to also make sure that we provide for separation of concerns uh, such that different uh, uh, people in, with different roles in uh, the cloud can apply uh, the policies that uh, they want to um, independently. So just to expand on that and be a bit uh, more explicit about the things that we wanted to develop, um, we wanted to have a policy-based um, connectivity between different application tiers. That's essentially the simp at the simplest form. We wanted to have an abstraction through which uh, the application deployer could say, I have a application tier, I have a web tier, and I just want them to be connected to each other and probably define some uh, rules and uh, policies with respect to how that connectivity is governed. Um, in addition, we wanted to be able to declare, uh, define, and deploy these policies once and get them dynamically applied whenever uh, applicable as um, new nodes join the web tier for whatever reason, the same policy that was applied to the web tier would get applied to the new entity, the new VM, the new endpoint. And uh, uh, as you guys uh, probably uh, have seen or have experienced, there is a good amount of work being done uh, in Neutron in terms of defining various types of advanced services. So we want to make sure that we are able to take advantage of that work as different type of services such as load balancers and firewalls and VPNs uh, are being developed. We want to be able to um, use those services and define our policies such that we can deploy, use uh, those kind of services. Um, and last, uh, we wanted to have a way, a clean way of, um, as I said, separation of concerns where administrators can define uh, policies and those policies could get applied automatically to certain user networks um, 
without the user uh, needing to do anything specific. Um, similarly, we wanted the user to be able to pick and choose uh, policies that are being provided by other um, uh, users in the system, uh, administrators or application deployers. So these are the kind of things we wanted to do. And in order to get there, we thought this group policy extension uh, is a very good model uh, for getting us there. So we are going to talk about group policy uh, extension and how we have modeled uh, uh, this new extension to Neutron. But before I, we get to that, I just want to have a couple of slides on the basic Neutron API, so we are on the same page. This is what uh, Neutron provides right now. And uh, the basic resources in Neutron are defined as networks, subnets, ports, and routers, to name just a few very uh, important ones. Um, as you can see, this is very much network-centric, and it is um, uh, for good reasons, and uh, it has been used for deploying various types of uh, uh, networks right now. Um, networks are isolated layer two broadcast domains, practically. Um, you have the option of having private and shared networks. Um, similarly, subnets are a collection of a set of um, IP addresses that uh, uh, you can associate with your network. Um, and have uh, possibly DNS servers or DHS, uh, DHCP servers associated with uh, your subnet. And ports uh, where, for most practical purposes, where your VMs get connected to your networks. Uh, this is just a logical uh, representation of that. And routers, if you have different types of uh, subnets in your system, you can kind of hook them up together. As you can see, we are kind of uh, using a model which is very network-centric, close to what we have in real world in some sense, and trying to kind of virtualize or abstract that we have those network devices. So just to make this a little bit more concrete, we are looking at a simple three-tier application where um, we have um, a VIP tier, an application tier, and a database tier. And we are saying that we have a certain type of connectivity between these tiers. There is an external network also that we want to be connected to. And for example, just uh, to uh, demonstrate how things are, um, we want to have a firewall and a load balancer um, between the external network and our um, uh, web tier, for example. Or we want to specify a certain quality of service requirement between our app tier and the database tier to make sure that we can provide a certain level of service, perhaps. So if we want to do this, and we can do it today, um, we have to essentially build a logical representation similar to what we have here, where we have different networks and subnets for each of our tiers, and connect them to a router. So there is connectivity being established between different tiers and possibly um, to the external network, and then add our different uh, services such as firewalls or load balancers to appropriate places um, like the router or uh, anywhere else. So to do this, you essentially the list of um, commands that you should start executing, whether it is directly through the command line or through a hit template. Uh, at the end of the day, you have to create a network, um, create a subnet, um, and assign a, possibly a set of uh, a range of IP addresses to it. And then connect your, uh, and create a router uh, for connecting your different subnets and uh, hook up your uh, subnets to this router. So the point is not the number of commands you need to um, use to get this uh, um, virtual uh, network going. It's the kind of constructs that you're using, uh, creating networks, subnets, routers, which uh, make perfect sense if uh, for uh, a lot of people, um, network admins, but as uh, we have been saying, maybe not the best choice for certain other types of users, application deployers. Um, and with that, um, I'm going to hand the mic to uh, uh, Sumit uh, to talk about the group policy extensions. 
Uh, thanks, Mohammed. Uh, yeah, nice, uh, nice introduction and motivation to uh, why we are doing this. So, like, uh, rightly uh, you pointed out, um, <clears throat> there are elemental abstractions, network-centric abstractions, which exist in Neutron. Um, but what we are trying to do in OpenStack is deploy apps, right? And it's really not very easy for that app deployer or the app de developer to be able to exercise these, uh, these, so to say, lower level network centric abstractions, right? And it's not the point that you have to do it once. Uh, you have to be intimately familiar with what plugs in where to actually maintain the consistency of the system if anything goes wrong, right? So <clears throat> in order to address that, um, uh, we are proposing these uh, group policy, uh, we are proposing the group policy model, uh, which, um, if you are familiar with uh, how the resources are represented in Neutron, is actually in the form of an extension. Um, so it's optional uh, to begin with, uh, and it's meant to be very complementary to the existing uh, sort of elemental Neutron uh, network-centric model, right? Um, I, I, I want to emphasize that it's, it's complementary to what is out there today. It's not meant to be a rip and replace uh, at all. So that said, right, uh, the basic idea can essentially be uh, boiled down to this slide, uh, which is uh, from an app deployer's perspective, right, um, you have your app deployed on your uh, VMs or bare metal hosts, right? You know how to stand up that app, and you think of uh, uh, that app or, or, or the entities which host that app as your endpoints. And for a collection of those endpoints, you should be able to group them together and apply policies on those, right? To be able to specify how those endpoints connect or the, how those groups connect with each other, right? Based on network policies. So we have endpoints, collection of those endpoints, endpoint groups. And then the policy gets applied or expressed through something called as a contract, right? Uh, why a contract? Because API contracts, you know, is is kind of a known notion or 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 or, of, uh, or a paradigm in in the application world, right? So we thought that that's very easy for app uh, app deployers to understand. So a contract encapsulates a collection of policy rules or network policies, right? So so just to reiterate, um, the whole model is obviously app deployer focused. You have endpoint groups and you have contracts, right? And what do you do with those? An endpoint group may say that I'm providing a particular contract by which, you know, if 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 you are an endpoint group which embodies a, a web server, you would you would you would say that I essentially provide a web server contract, right? And then on the client side, the the the, the set of entities which comprise the client would say. I consume this web contract, right? <clears throat> Note that uh, there, is a, there is an element of dynamic binding here. The notion of a contract is, a, is more like a template which captures the network policies, which can be reused. There might be one or more end, endpoint groups which actually provide that service, right? And it's left to the implementation as to how to match a particular contract to a candidate uh, endpoint group provider, right? So you as a user do not have to manage that as to which endpoint you are consuming, right? Um, and you don't have to maintain that connectiv connectivity relationship through the life cycle of that entire, uh, you know, interaction as you would have to if you were purely using the, the, the network-centric layer of abstractions. So, uh, diving a little bit deeper, right? Um, we mentioned uh, the contract has policy rules. What do those policy rules look like? You have classifiers and actions, right? And the classifiers are actually very application uh, uh, centric, right? You define, uh, as, as an app deployer, you know at what uh, uh, layer four port your, your application is available at, right? So you define the port, you define the protocol, and you define the direction uh, in which the communication uh, needs to be permitted, right? 
Uh, now, based on the classifier, uh, you have a set of actions that 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 you can act on 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 traffic which meets this this criteria, right? Um, and we've enumerated a few of them. Um, uh, in, in, in the first iteration uh, of, of the demo that we'll show you, we, we actually implemented allow and redirect, again, based on the existing uh, neutron constructs that are available today. Um, and then we could further extend, uh, you know, to uh, quality of service, log, copy, mark, and, and this is an extensible list, right, based on what your infrastructure supports. Uh, <coughs> so by the way, uh, the, this is a whitelist based model, so you don't see uh, an explicit deny action over there, right? Which is in sync with what uh, OpenStack and Neutron has, right? You have to explicitly open communications up. So let's walk through the workflow, right? Uh, one step at a time. Um, probably um, best explained through, through a CLI. Um, so, you first create a classifier, uh, assuming in this case the example is that um, there is um, a, a contract that you need to create to provide access to a web server, right? <clears throat> so you, um, the, the name of the classifier is insecure web access. Uh, you're trying to po open up port 80 uh, using TCP. The next thing that you do is you wrap that classifier into a policy rule and say that the action is allowed for this particular uh, traffic. The third thing that you do is you create a contract out of this, right? And this is a very simplified example where we have just one policy rule in here, but you could have multiple of these, right? So this is a contract for allowing access to, uh, allowing connectivity to a web server, right? And now you you create your uh, you create and populate your endpoints and endpoint groups to actually access the web server which will be uh, providing this contract, right? So you first create an endpoint group for a web server, and you say that that provides this web server contract which was created earlier. And then you stand and th and then then you stand up your application inside that uh, inside that EPG web server EPG. Uh, so you explicitly create the endpoints in that, and then you have the consumer EPG, uh, which you define as the outside EPG. You allow connectivity to your web server from the outside world, right? So you say consumes contract web server contract. So that's it. That's all you need to to signal as an intent from from an app deployer's perspective to be able to allow this entire communication to happen, right? Uh, everything else is sort of handled um, under, under the hood um, in a way that the system has a way to keep itself consistent, right? Something goes wrong, there might be multiple EPGs which are providing the same web server contract, so you could fail over potentially, but you as an app deployer do not have to manage that. So uh, trying to map to the earlier, uh, you know, use case that Mohammed had brought up. Uh, this is the same uh, three-tier, uh, you know, well-known use case, um, and how that would look in terms of the the constructs that 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 we just talked about, right? Uh, <clears throat> so at each of the layers, you see that there are contracts even C to C3, and uh, this is kind of an oversimplified example, but you will see that. Um, for access from the outside world to the web server tier, um, we are we are opening up port 80, but then the action is to redirect through a firewall and a load balancer chain, right? Before it eventually hits the web server tier. So the claim is that's all that you need to do in terms of having to express intent, right? For the connectivity that you want to achieve. And so on for you know uh, the access to the, uh, between the uh, the web tier and the app tier, the access between the app tier and the DB tier, right? Uh, that said, uh, this what what was presented here was um, uh, up until this point was the most basic form of the model. Uh, there are a lot lots of knobs in 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 here which are again purely optional. But they, uh, but 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 which make the uh, model a lot more richer. So uh, 
there is a provision for defining scopes in terms of you know when you have multiple candidate EPGs providing a contract, how you can match uh, the provider with with the consumer. Uh, there are ways that uh, uh, th there are things modeled in in here which will allow you to essentially have one big contract but be able to you know define subsets of it rather than ha having to deal with many tiny contracts so that these contracts can be reused uh, we have a notion of a contract hierarchy so the the separation of concerns that uh, mohammed was talking about earlier right so you have an app guy and you have the 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 infra guy right so and the infra guy let's say wants to introduce some constraints on a communication that's already happening between two tiers right you want to introduce a firewall or you want to introduce an ids so the contract hierarchy is a means to do that right um, uh, and then we have the notion of labels. Um, so, so, so you, 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 you can assign labels to endpoints, endpoint groups, and then based on what labels you assign, automatically policies get triggered corresponding to those which are being defined in the contract, right? So you don't have to go and orchestrate these changes. You, you, you assign a label, and boom, automatically things propagate from there. With that, uh, let me hand over to Stephen for the fun part of the presentation. <laughs> well, thank you, Sumit, for uh, doing a thorough explanation of the model. So we actually, as a team, put together a proof of concept implementations, and we're going to demo it to uh, all of you guys. So to reiterate Summit's point that this is actually complementary to the Neutron constructs, the demo, the PLC implementation, actually renders all the policies constructs into native Neutron constructs. So that's the, uh, that's the architecture. So we, we, are, we can actually configure this using CLI, Heat, or Horizon. Through Neutron, we render, and the, the policy manager, which is actually newly developed for this project, uh, would render everything down to either Neutron... <laughs> well, n Neutron, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, that, was, that was a great action set. <laughs> so the, um, it would render down to native Neutron constructs, which is what we actually do on this demo. Uh, it can actually do any ODL drivers or any other things that actually plugins would write. And for something like this, it's actually, it's obviously not done just by the four of us. It's a, a Cross vendors, a lot of us actually participated. All of us actually believe in this model, and hopefully you will too. Uh, the where? Not the heat one. So actually explaining the demo a little bit. Um, as Samit just said, actually, so you as an app owner wants to deploy an app that would that is actually two tiers, a uh, web tier and, and as well as the client, so it's an external, basically. Um, so, so when the app people created all the constructs to enforce their policies down to um, the network, uh, you would now see that the VM goes on to a client, a simulator client on the side, and, and the web VM sitting on the other endpoint groups. You will see all the policies get enforced, and on the separation of um, control there, the admin would come in and actually add a firewall, and you will see that, in this case, they say in, maybe there's an attack on port 80, they want to actually start dropping packets on, on port 80. You see that uh, now the, the client accessing the web tier using port 80 would no longer work. And then we're basically asking the app developers to start open a different port. And you can see that it's basically just one line change to make it happen. So th actually, this is an explanation of what I just said. So the, 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 <laughs> the little browser is just moving around. <laughs> And here we go. So the first thing to do is, as Sumit actually showed earlier too, is to create your classifiers. In this case, you are basically creating classifiers to have bidirectional to all of them. 
no protocols. And now you're setting up the HTTP side. Of, so you first set the classifiers. You haven't associated that to any action set because that's actually the policy rules. So you set up HTTPS classify also, SS, as well as SSH because the SSL layer has to go through before HTTP, HTTPS can actually go through. And now you create the action type, which is just allow as submit set. This is a whitelist model. And now you associated the classifier with the action on the policy rules. And here you can see that we are separating out the actions from the, from the classifier because we want reusability. Now you can actually all reuse the same actions. Even though it's three different classifiers going to three different policy rules, you are reusing the same actions. So now you're creating a contract based on the set of policy rules that we just, actually, we, we just set up. And then now you create an endpoint group that, can, that, that provides that contract. So this is the web tier. And then the client tier, the external click tier with endpoint groups would now be consuming that particular contract. And then now you create an endpoint. You can see that now we're booting an image to be the web server. And then we are creating client endpoints and associate that with the next boot, the Nova boot of the client VM. So they're on two different endpoint groups. And the contract, so this is, this is actually the admin uh, contract that we talked about. So now you're creating an, a, a firewall policies which the admin would, would, uh, would create on that example, saying that right now we have an attack on port 80. Uh, the admin now wants to create a firewall that sits there and deny everything on port 80. So the admin's firewalls are created. And then we create redirect actions that would actually redirect anything that matches the classifiers to now reroute it to the firewall. And he creates the policy rules. As, as before, this is by admin. And now you create a policy rules that the admin actually wants to put to associate a classifier with the action. And well, for all, all three different protocol types. And now you created a contract, you, you updated a contract. As you can see from Horizon, after typing in the admin password, that all your access your, on, your, on your demo, which is your client and uh, your, uh, your tenant in this case, now have the group policies set up. Contracts are all well set up. And this is a display of what we just set up actually on the classifiers and actions. and a set of endpoint groups on Horizon. And you can see the topology. So on render down to neutron networks, you see that we actually created separate networks. Uh, the, the endpoint groups associated, associated, with the, um, associated with the subnet. And we can, we can actually even see the, f the firewall being set up. Actually, I, I didn't pause the, uh, at the diagram. <laughs> Sorry about that. Can the user create the policies or the Oh, sorry? Well, user can also the yeah. So tenant creates their policies for their, their web, their, their, their applications. Because only tenants or application owners know what kind of policy they want to apply to their, to their applications. But then there's an infrastructure concern that can kick in, in which case the admin can create yet another policies to update the existing policies and then actually be applied to the app at that moment. So in any case, it's actually moving. So this is it. And uh, what's the heat one? Yeah. Are we doing good? Yeah. The heat heat.
That is, that is a very good question. So uh, we actually make it work at HEAT already, and uh, Heymanth is actually going to present to us. Uh, in HEAT, it's actually much nicer looking, of course. <laughs> well, I think the rest of the team have showed how cool group policy is. Uh, the rest of the team have done a good job on showing how cool the group policy is. Let's heat up the presentation with a little uh, heat template, a hot template. So I mean, some of these, uh, he, basically we've uh, integrated all the cons, all the resources, group policy resources as a plugin into heat, and all of the power is available through the heat engine. Uh, the template here we put together uh, shows the same uh, setup of uh, defining an application and uh, allowing a provider to provide that application and a consumer to uh, consume that application. That's that's the base part. And one other nice aspect of uh, the group policy resources is a level of hierarchy, uh, which lets an admin override some policies. So uh, let me let me walk through some of the constructs here. So. So the, fir the first part of the template has, uh, has a definition of the application, which, which is essentially a contract. And uh, to define a contract, uh, you need some other elements, such as uh, classifiers and actions. And the contracts uh, essentially define an application. And the endpoint groups are the people who consume the application. And uh, the last part is the one, the one that I was talking about, where you can define another contract and override the action, how this application is being consumed. So that's, that, I mean, that shows the simplicity of the API needed to realize a complex topology like this. I mean, it's, it's basically abstracting the underlying uh, things that need, that need to be rendered to make this a reality. But for the application uh, provider and the consumer, uh, and the focus is on the application and not, not so much on the underlying topology that is needed to render the application. So I think the rest, rest of the thing is a repeat of uh, what happened when uh, Stephen executed the CLI commands. Uh, the same thing, uh, the rest of the thing shows uh, the things rendered. And uh, the UI which was developed uh, brings out the different aspects of uh, different resources that were created both the group policy constructs as well as underlying uh, network networking constructs so that's that's pretty much what i have so wow uh, so yeah you can as you can see the topology is pretty much the same using a hit template and for now Oh, this is a different thing. Yeah. Oh, because this is not related. There you go. So you all know my son now. <laughs> so the state of implementation is the blueprint actually was already approved and reviewed. Uh, obviously, the POC is working. And then the POC branch, you can actually access it from there. It's open. Everyone's welcome to look at the code if you're a hacker. Um, the reference presentation is still going in progress. Uh, there, there are obviously some complementary network service framework needs to be in place to actually do the, uh, a much better job on the implementation. But it's actually pretty much almost there. Um, for anyone who wants to actually know more, tomorrow we actually have a design session at 10.50 in pretty much the same neutron room. Uh, the wiki page is on this URL. And um, we welcome everyone to join our IRC meeting every week which is uh, on Thursday, US time. <laughs> so um, we can now open up for Q&A. Hi, I want to ask a question. So instead of uh, for user to create network, subnet, and firewall, and etc., uh, if user use GPP uh, directly, then 
GPP will internally create a network uh, subnet and uh, firewall for user without a user knowing of all the items, right? Yes, it depends on who the user is. Okay, so, so if if user just use the uh, GPP command line or yeah. from the GUI, so internally uh, GPP will create a network yes. a firewall and subnet for for user. The user do not care about uh, the exactly. Okay. The, yeah, the resource atomicity is at the group policy model level. The fact that it orchestrates and creates uh, underlying uh, network resources is, is what we are trying to abstract the user away from. And okay. that's, that's the app deployer. OK. But if you still want to know the details, they can yes. check it out. OK. Using exactly. Just using CLI or uh, GUI, yes. right? OK. Standard okay. API remains. So that would be create port, create network. They're all there. Okay. So these are just an like extension to that API. Yeah. So, so what we showed in this, uh, and maybe you can bring up the slide again. Uh, uh, so the group policy model is independent in itself, oh, right? Yeah. But in the context of the current Neutron uh, uh, you know, uh, network-centric yeah. abstractions, we have a mapping to those abstractions as is shown over here, right? Oh, no. So <laughs> the legacy policy driver here, right? OK, OK. Uh, so, so we've, we've drawn a clean separation between the policy model and uh, the, the, the existing neutron abstractions, right? Okay. Uh, and and, and we, what we've shown here is a way to do that. And if you use, uh, if you configure your system uh, with these drivers, it's possible to uh, essentially go and introspect and find out what networks, what ports, what subnets, what firewalls, and so on, what got created. Okay, so you are not adding any of the new networking elements, just a- uh, Absolutely uh, not. Oh, yeah. Just a high level abstraction, right? Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. But that's one way of, uh, of providing the mapping. Framework. So that, that's the work in progress. The okay. ODL side is work in progress. Uh, our model is very similar to what uh, is the model in ODL, but we haven't done the mapping. We haven't. Uh, we don't have these drivers. The only one that we have in this proof of concept is the the legacy. Um, okay. So the the ODL uh, model is somewhat different from the uh, uh, the, n the model that you have. Right. Yeah. Right. So is the intention t to align it with the uh, ODL? Or? Okay. Yeah, the, the group-based policy model, right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it, it is very similar. It is similar. It can be easily rendered into open daylight policy, model, policy drivers. You have four minutes to go, guys. Good. So when you generate the uh, routers, how do you pick the subnets and the external gateway addresses? So there are things that happens as a configuration. It can be set by the administrator, the pool of IP addresses that you have available, and things like that. It happens orthogonal to what you do in terms of standing up those networks. So those things are part of just the you know, neutron configuration, or yeah. do you do you intend to provide anything from your constructs? So that's what you have. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Well, just um, for example, with uh, subnet uh, IP allocation and so forth, there's um, part of the policy model that you didn't really see here is called a, um, a routing domain that has kind of a, a supernet that's then divided up into subnets. So you, there's configuration that if that gets created implicitly, if you don't you know if you don't do it yourself. Um, Configuration is where the, the range of IPs to use for that will come from. Um, but uh, you can create it programmatically through the API as well and, and use whatever you want. Yeah, uh, I'm Keshav. I don't know whether this question is uh, I mean, right or not. So uh, these, uh, the endpoints and uh, associated apps uh, can be on different node and can it be across different VLAN also? The the, the 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 connectivity, right? Whether it's VLANs, VXLANs, or whether there is multi-segment, is is an implementation or a mapping detail. I mean, right? I mean, is there any? Uh, I mean, in, in this one, is there any? The if, if apps are associated in different node or in different VLAN, 
the framework tries to take care of i mean creating those kind of networks and the, try to link them the policy model is agnostic of that okay. right in a there are there are defined semantics for connectivity inside an endpoint group right okay. things inside an endpoint group have connectivity so going so from inside the endpoint group to the outside you do not have and then for that's that's where you define the connectivity through the model so ideally, you only tell us what the behavior is supposed to be, and then the network, we will, will, the, the Neutron Legacy or Open Daylight is going to set it up for you. So, so if, you, if it's across VLAN, it turns out to be segregation by VLAN, the network driver should take care of that. We have all the information on the wiki, yeah. uh, links to the demo, <laughs> links to our weekly meeting. If you have concern, bring it to the meetings okay. every week. Yeah, and we, we can obviously it's get out there and have a discussion. The wiki page Thank you. is okay. it's being destroyed. But, uh,